All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, or more likely, boys and gentlemen. But today is your lucky day because we're gonna be turning you from a boy into a man. We're gonna get you jacked as fuck, and we're gonna teach you how to pick up some heavy ass weight. But you're not gonna pick up this weight just in any sort of manner. You're gonna be picking it up like a man. So what does that entail, you may ask? Well, that entails pulling sumo deadlift. That's right, not conventional. We are pulling sumo deadlift. I said it, sumo deadlift is for men. You wanna know why? Because the people who always complain about sumo, they always whine like babies. So that's right, sumo is just a superior lift for men. What can I say? And when do you see the most aesthetic people pulling conventional? Never. David Lade pulled sumo, Lex Little pulled sumo, basically everyone pulls sumo. It's just what you fucking do. That is, if you want to look absolutely fucking sick. See, I've been pulling sumo for ages, and I turned out just fine. I mean, for the most part. Once you start pulling sumo, you're gonna be pulling bitches left and right. And that's just facts. That is straight up factual. On gang, on grandma, on whatever. Guaranteed or your money back. And you know why? Because I'm gonna see you thrust your hips forward, and it's just gonna be a massive turn on. Like, if, if I see you pull like that, bro, I'm gonna be turned on as hell too. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. And by the end of this video, your Johnson is going to be three times bigger than when you started it. So if you clicked on this video, you're probably one of three things. One, you are straight and you're tired of getting your back blown out by a conventional deadlift as if you were homosexual. Two, your sumo deadlift tick just looks like ass and you just look like a dog taking a shit. Or three, you've never touched a bar to deadlift before, meaning that you've probably never felt the touch of a woman before. So you want to know what that feels like. So today is week three, day three of my current training block. So that means that we have primary deadlift tertiary bench and what do you know chest and back again but if you guys watched my last video you know that my titty is still a little bit strained so i'm probably not gonna be benching today even though i really just want to throw some weight up on bench i don't know my my last two brain cells are communicating and they're telling me that the play is to just let my chest rest for the week so we're not gonna let mental retardation take over for the day but okay it's like 8 42 p.m right now so we're about to walk in there. We're gonna do our warm-ups first, of course. It's the same warm-up that I do for squats. Just need to get my hips open, pause on that, and my legs nice and warmed up, so. So we're gonna be doing our leg swings, uh, horizontal and forward, some deep squat sits, some front foot elevated lunges, some hip flexor activation, oh, and some sissy squats just to get the knees nice and nice and cooked up. All right, so we got a hefty deadlift double today. So what we're gonna do is go in there and hit our warm-ups. Well, actually first, I'm probably gonna take a mean ass dump first. But then after that, we're gonna hit our warm ups. So before I teach you guys how to become a man and pull sumo, let me show you my credentials first. Bro, that shit fucking flew. I needed that so bad. Like, you, don't even, you don't even understand, bro. I've been so down bad. Like, I'm the down bad equivalent of dating an OnlyFans girl. And, like, that's not even, that wasn't even like a max. That was definitely RP8, like it was supposed to be. So, we fucking take those, like, every day of the week. But to put that in Fortnite terms, I've been getting 200 pumped for like the past 10 weeks. And I finally got my editing skills down and got my victory royale. All right, my mic completely shit the bed while I was recording. I don't know what happened, but there's literally zero audio on the clip, so fuck it, we're just gonna improvise. I told you guys I would teach you how to deadlift like a man, so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna split this up into two parts, the setup and then the actual deadlift part. So for the setup, step one of the setup is how wide 
you are going to be in your stance. So what you want to do is find a stance that you just feel comfortable in. You don't want to go too wide to where you're just absolutely tearing your hips up. And you don't want to go too narrow to where it just feels super weird for you. But yeah, just start at a comfortable width. Um, one that just won't tear up your hips. But the most important part about finding a good stance is to consistently do that exact same stance. So what you want to do is use the rings on the bar. Um, let me pause it. I don't know if you guys can see right here. There's a ring on the bar. I don't know how much of a beginner you guys are, but I usually put the middle of my foot right under the ring of the bar. So like when I'm looking down, the rings are right above the center of my feet. That's the width I like and I feel comfortable with, but that's what I'm using every single time to get the exact same setup. Now, step two of the deadlift setup is going to be how in or how out you point your toes. And now I see people point their toes completely forward. And I mean, in my personal opinion, that is just really weird and just like looks and feels weird. But if that's what feels comfortable with you, then by all means do it. But if you're just starting out, I would recommend doing a 45 degree angle just like me, just pointing your toes like nice out at a complete diagonal. And of course, you're going to know if you're pointing them out too much, if your hips are just like really struggling when you're just like going for a lockout. And then number three of the setup is going to be how far you are from the bar when you're pulling. You When you come down to grab the bar, you want your knees, well, your knees are going to track forward over your feet. So you want your shins to not touch the bar completely. You want to be like five millimeters away from the bar when you're down like at the bar level and of course that's because you don't want to be kicking the bar away when you're wedging in and your knees are like traveling forward and you don't want to be too far back because then if you're pulling the bar is going to just pull you forward and down so positioning is the most important part of the sumo deadlift if you mess up your starting position you're pretty much fucked but okay now that we got all of that down now let's get into the real nitty-gritty of the deadlift which is the actual pulling part so we're going to split this up into three three steps too so step number one is going to be the pump, which I'm about to do right here. It's when you have your hands on the bar and then you bring your hips and your torso up. So what that does is it's creating tension in your upper back and your feet as well as in your arms while you're pulling the bar. And remember that you're keeping your arms as long as possible while doing this. So if your arms are on the bar and you're pulling up, your shoulders are coming up. And if you know anything about physics, if your shoulders are coming up and your hands are still on the bar, then the bar is going to pull onto your shoulders and there's gonna, it's going to create a whole lot of tension in that area. All right, so let me just draw this out for you guys. So then by bringing your hips up, you're also bringing your torso into position where it's going to be like trying to come up, but it can't because your arms are connected to the bar. So then there's this tension being created in your arms and in your upper back and in your feet. The whole point of the pump is to create that tension in your arms, upper back, and your feet. That's the whole point of it. So now we got step two, and this is going to be the wedge right here. So after the pump, you're going to come back in and just wedge your hips right in. So what I need you to imagine is like you're giving a girl, like the, the baddest girl, the meanest back shots of your life. Like, you will never be able to tap a girl this bad ever again in your life. So what you're doing when you're wedging in is you are pulling back with all your might while you're bringing your hips in and you're trying to give, like, every single millimeter that you have. And she's like, please go deeper, go deeper. And you don't have anything left to give, but you are trying your very damn hardest to create any sort of new millimeter that you can. Okay, so now what's happening with the wedge is that this is the pump right here. When you're wedging in, your torso is coming back and up this way. So that's inadvertently creating more like length in your arms in respect to the bar. So your arms are lengthening and building even more tension while you're wedging in. So the whole key to the sumo deadlift is just building more and more tension as you go throughout the movement. And then of course you're just wedging in your hips as much as possible to get an advantageous position to just leg press. Because once you wedge in your hips, all you have to do, you have tension everywhere in your body, all you have to do, press with your legs up. And then you just come up and back. That's, that's all that's happening here. So your upper back is going up and backwards while your hips come down and forwards. So then you create kind of like this kind of movement that goes like that with your upper body and then your lower body and then you just literally become one with the bar and just press up and then that's how you deadlift. So that's pretty much the oversimplified version of how to deadlift like a man 
aka sumo deadlift and then you put it all together and it just looks beautiful like this you just build up all that tension and then you just leg press easy as that oh and one minor tip that i forgot to give is that make sure that you are looking up while you are deadlifting it just helps create even longer arms all right now that i taught you how to sumo deadlift like a man let's get back in there destroy our bodies and then some heavy ass weight In the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use. Cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. If you Bro, I shit you not, I dead ass forgot that I wasn't wearing shorts under and like while I was warming up for deadlifts, I went to take off my pants because obviously I hate deadlifting in joggers because the bar gets caught on your legs and I started dropping my pants and I'm halfway down until I realize I see the color of my boxers and I'm like, oh fuck, those are not shorts and I just pull my pants right back up, bro and I was in the middle of the, of the powerlifting section of the gym and I, I was just like... <laughs> Bro, when I was wearing gray boxers too, I did not need everyone seeing my millimeter Peter print on my boxers, bro. And I'm pretty sure it's a thing where when you're lifting or like about to lift, like you're just smaller for whatever reason. So I would have been like a, fuck, what's smaller than a millimeter? A fucking, a fucking Yocto meter, Peter. <laughs> but yeah, fuck, that was way too close. Besides that, that was a fucking great session though. 617 for two on deadlift. That's my best set since I had my surgery. Like that shit's crazy, bro. Like, I am literally at my strongest right now, and that's so crazy to think of how, like, one year ago, I was literally crippled in bed right now at this time of the year. Like, that's just crazy to me, but it just goes to show that if you're in a rough point in your life right now, to not lose hope, because you will bounce back, and you will come back better. Literally, one of my favorite quotes is, the comeback is always greater than the setback. Like, a year ago, I really had no clue if I'd ever be able to powerlift again. And, you know, that hurt me. Like, that hurt me bad. Because, bro, I love this shit. I love powerlifting. I love lifting heavy-ass weight. I love getting jacked as hell. Like, if I didn't have the ability to push myself in a gym and go as hard as I can, I don't even know where I would be mentally right now. Because I just love this shit. I, I want it so bad, bro. And I, and I know it sounds fucking corny as fuck, like someone going to war, but that's literally how you have to treat the gym. You have to treat the gym like it's do or die or you won't grow. Because you need to be like pushing yourself and you need to just cross that mental barrier to be able to do that 
And let me tell you, bro, like it's not easy to cross that mental barrier to really just push your body to its max limits. But I've been feeling good as ever lately. And like not even on my compounds, but even on my accessories, bro, I'm handling weights that a year ago I was struggling like pretty bad with. But I think that's just also because of the help I've been getting from like the new literature that's been coming out of like how you want to do a lot of your sets to to six, not really eight to 12. You don't really want to be hitting 12. You really want to aim for six because that's what's going to give you your strength on your accessories. And then because you're doing sets of six, you're getting stronger so you can in turn do more reps and volume. Uh, I made more progress on accessories within like the last six months than I made in probably like my first three years of lifting like it's actually insane how much of a difference it's made to just train to six reps to failure but yeah it's gonna be it today so you lost your sumo virginity congrats let me know if it's a boy or a girl in nine months but um don't invite me to the gender reveal party because those shits are whack